I also wanted to ask you about the, the requirement for an annual decertification mm -hmm. vote for, for employee unions. Given how much the unions will be given up, the, mm -hmm. the ability to, uh, to negotiate over their, their health care and their pension benefits, isn't that a little bit of piling on? Why not, why not just leave them that, that ability to, to not have to have an annual decertification vote? And in fact, can't the members already vote to decertify if they wish to? Well, uh, one, in terms of the timing, whether it's a year or a couple years, uh, to us, that's one that we, we'd be willing to talk about. Um, in terms of should there be any vote, absolutely. Uh, because I think, again, what this does is, is it makes the case on behalf of the workers uh, that the union has to prove their worth, that they have to see that there's some value for that. If someone wants to be a part of the union, they should be able to shot to say, okay, is this worth it, uh, and give them the, f the right to choose whether they want to be a part of the union, whether that makes sense or not. But again, in terms of the, the timing of that, how often it, it, we put that out on, on a year basis, that's when we could talk about if someone wanted to make a change. You, you've talked a lot about the need to create 250,000 new jobs in Wisconsin. Now, Dan Clancy, who is the president of the Wisconsin Technical College mm -hmm. System, has said that the provisions of the budget are going to curtail their ability to offer services to employers and, and to students, and he feels this is coming at a time when they're, when they're most needed. Mm -hmm. According to Dan Clancy, the majority of the new jobs in the next decade are going to require the sorts of skills that people can get at Wisconsin's Technical College. Here in Madison, Madison College, MATC, is looking at a 30% cut, uh, $71.6 million reductions. Make the case for me that these cuts to the tech school system and to individual campuses make sense at a time when we're trying to grow the economy, increase people's job skills, and, and create more jobs. Yeah, and it all goes back to the budget repair bill. If you pass the budget repair bill, the savings for technical school colleges far exceed, far, far exceed the reductions in state aid. We looked category by category, schools, technical schools, municipalities, and counties. And what we tried to do was make an adjustment and say, what's the maximum amount of savings, or not maximum, what's the savings, the realistic, uh, actually we use conservative numbers, what's the savings we can receive if we make the, the pension, health care, and, and other uh, compensation changes. In the case of the technical schools, they get a much larger dollar amount, much larger percentage savings because so much of their money comes from the local property tax, so little of it comes from the state aid. Uh, but yet the cost savings they get, because this is a, the, the wage and benefit reforms applied to, to all of them, uh, all local government employees, um, in their case, they can get the numbers show that the technical schools far, far exceed the amount of savings they get by using these same standards we're giving to other local governments. So in their case, not only will they offset the cuts, uh, they will be able to ultimately see more dollars come again uh, because of their wage and benefit reforms. But at the same time, if, if the wage and benefit reforms go through, we're, we're making it less attractive for the instructors at our tech colleges to stay there. And there's the potential, I think, that we could lose some of those instructors. Well, I don't know where they go, because right now in this economy, uh, people are paying a whole lot more than even what we're asking. Most people in the private sector are paying close to twice what we're asking. Federal government employees are paying twice what we're asking. Uh, and outside of this state, all but five states have deficits, and almost every one of them are cutting aid to schools, the university system, and local governments. So, again, we are not an island. This is, if you listen to detractors, they make it sound like this is the only place that's doing it. The difference is everybody else essentially is doing this. What we're doing that's unique is instead of just cutting technical schools, instead of just cutting the university, instead of just cutting uh, schools and local governments, we're actually giving them something to offset those cuts with. And as long as they implement them, we're going to be in good shape. Is it possible <coughs> that we may see the, the, the legislature working simultaneously on the budget repair bill and, and the, the state budget? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I think it, it, to me it's yet one more reason why the, when I went around the state to many in this last week to many of the 14 Senate, Demo Senate districts where Senate Democrats are missing, people there were extremely, extremely frustrated, particularly since Tuesday, because they're looking at this saying, hey, we got a big budget here. We got probably, arguably, one of the most important budgets we've had in years, if not decades. And as the state legislature, both houses start to act on that, if this goes from two weeks to two months to longer, that means all those people living in those Senate districts no longer have a voice in the state Senate. 
Uh, I think that no matter where you stand on this issue, no matter whether you're Republican or Democrat, you have to find that extremely, extremely disturbing. Uh, and it's why I hope in the end, <coughs> excuse me, it's one of the reasons why I think, uh, combined with the, the pending layoffs that will be forthcoming at the beginning of April, uh, I think that there's enough state senators willing to come back, and, and they've had it. Now it's time to come back. Governor Scott Walker, thanks very much. Good to be with you.